Uh, I watched uh, I watched the Blackberry movie, which, by the way, oh. it's Blackberry, one word, and a capital B Blackberry. Two, two capital Bs, yeah. And then there's a capital B somewhere in the middle. I mean, that messed me up for a good five minutes there. Uh, this is a movie all about the creation of Blackberry, the phone. I don't know. Do you you guys ever have Blackberries? I don't. I don't think our generation had Blackberries. I think what's strange about this movie is that the only people that it's going to impact are probably too old to actually watch or appreciate this movie because I don't think anyone actually had a Blackberry younger uh, than fifty. My wife right? had a Blackberry, and really? uh, we just found it again recently and plugged it in, and it still works. And now my son plays games on it. Very interesting. <laughs> Well, Blackberry is uh, directed by Matt Johnson. He sounds like a, a, a 12th, right? he sounds like the 12th man for the heat. He probably went off the bench and drained some threes. Uh, the story stars Jay Baruchel. Come on, Jay, what were you thinking? And uh, Glenn Howerton as, uh, well, Jay is the inventor. He's like the guy in air that makes the shoe, except he makes the phone and he's a, he's a nerd. And uh, Glenn Howerton, uh, he, he pulls off the uh, bald guy look really, really well. And we were talking about Robert Duvall. Robert Duvall pulled that off really well in the early 80s. And he probably would have played that role if this movie took place in the early 80s. It doesn't actually. It takes place in the mid-90s. It's kind of when it starts. The movie kind of feels a little bit like Jobs. Or is it Steve Jobs? I can't remember. The one with Michael Fassbender and Kate Winslet, whichever no, one that Steve was. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, Ashton Kutcher yeah. is Jobs. Because like like that movie, which I I have to admit I never saw, but that movie um, covers three pivotal points in the career of Steve Jobs, I believe. Again, I didn't see it. This movie covers three pivotal points in the era of BlackBerry in 1996 when it was this kind of startup company run by a bunch of nerds who quote Star Wars and have movie nights. And then in 2003, when the company was like at its heyday and everybody was getting a BlackBerry and Oprah was giving them out for free in her sweepstakes. And then 2000, I think seven, when Steve Jobs comes in and introduces the iPhone and they all realize that, uh, uh oh, our, our company is dead. Uh, it's an interesting movie. You know, you have to think about the movie in, in the context of Air and the Tetris movie. Um, I think it's a step up from both those movies because in this one, the characters are a little bit more interesting. It doesn't um, have to play fast and loose with history like Tetris does. Um, and well, actually, so and, and Air, quite honestly. Um, I like the first part the most. I, I like the idea of the startup company. And there's this clash between Jay Baruchel. Again, he's this computer programming nerd. And Howerton, who's this kind of madman-esque uh, executive on his last ropes. And he's mortgaging his home to invest in the company. But he wants a big share. And it feels very much social networky at times. And I think that's why I like the first part more than the rest of the movie. I don't understand uh, the need for movies or the appeal uh, uh, of characters yelling and screaming at each other. Uh, do you guys watch like Bar Rescue or like uh, Chef Ramsay? I can't stand that stuff. I, I hate when people yell at, yell at each other. And Glenn Howerton in this movie has a lot of freakouts. And it's not like the fun sort of Nicolas Cage freakouts. It's just like yelling and berating people. And I, I think we're supposed to like his character, but I just can't get past that. Uh, the movie's a good movie, though. It's three stars. I think, like I said, it's a step above the other two movies. I think you could probably leave at about the 45 minute mark and not miss a whole lot because the movie doesn't really have anything poignant or lasting to say at the end. It's just kind of like this curious sort of history of this obsolete device that no one thinks about anymore, except for apparently ter Terry's son. And uh, I really haven't thought about it since I saw it. And I think a, a better, stronger movie, not directed by um, NBA Sixth Man of the Year, Matt Johnson, would have been uh, maybe better. You know, if David Fincher had directed it or something. But uh, it's fine. It's good. Go see it and screw the, screw the heat. I hate you. Man, you are in a bad mood. Okay. I, I gave this movie four stars. I love this movie. Really? This is the best wow. movie of the year. And. Wow. I think Glenn Howerton gives the best performance I've seen in like He's such an asshole though. Definitely in the in well, definitely this year. He he channels all of the anger that he has in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and put it in more of a dramatic setting, and he what absolutely owns in this. I mean, movie. I'm not saying it's a bad performance, but I think you're supposed yeah. to like him. He's such an asshole. No, you're not supposed to like him. He's he's like this like villainous portrayal of 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 like the worst kind of of capitalism you know like that that's what he represents you're supposed to root for jay baruchel and matt johnson and uh but i mean I, I thought this movie was like if you take the social network and kind of the wolf of wall street and you yeah. play it like silicon valley or something yeah, like that and that's that. kind of what you get but but it's more dramatic than that it's almost like middlemen or like or like michael douglas's wall street and i i absolutely 
dug everything about it. I love all of the corporate stuff, the corporate takeover kind of stuff, and like all of the behind the scenes stuff. And, and and the fact that this phone was like so revolutionary and it's completely obsolete is fascinating to me. And that how it only took, you know, what, less than 20 years for that to happen. It, I, I think the story absolutely needed to be told. And I think, I think it's, I think it's kind of a masterpiece and the best version of this kind of movie that we've been getting. It's interesting. I don't disagree with a lot of your points. It, it was an entertaining movie. I just I felt like this once it, it leapt forward very quickly to 2003. And by that point, the company was was big. And I kind of thought I I wanted to see more like I want to see more of this rapport between Baruchel and Howerton, which is the best part of the movie in the first part. And instead, the movie kind of became about corporate greed and excess, which I get. I mean, that's that's honest to, you know, well, yeah, what, when what you're about happens, to get but... like a multi-million dollar deal right off the bat i mean yeah you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> i didn't care about the other characters it it, it it starts to involve too many other characters though that i didn't care as much about and i think it got a little bit uh, convoluted at the end of the movie but i i did like the last scene of it but again it kind of makes me think like what's the what's the lasting impact of blackberry i'm not sure it seems more of a curiosity than anything that's resonant with our society but that doesn't make it a bad movie necessarily uh, but I think you're absolutely supposed to like Glenn Howerton. I mean, the guy puts up, he puts up a mortgage on his house. He's supposed to be, oh, you, we, we, we're rooting for him. And, you know, they've got this great dynamic, but, uh, it's fascinating that you love it so much. I can see it though, because it definitely has some boiler room DNA, Wolf of Wall Street DNA. I, I can see it. So Zach, what you're saying is, uh, the, once the time jump happened, it completely lost you. I wouldn't say it completely lost me. It's just the first, I would have liked the whole movie to be set in 1996. One but, of my yeah. favorite things about the movie is that Jay Baruchel does drive the car that I used to own, uh, the Civic hatchback. That was, that scored Titus? some real. Titus? Yes, Titus? Was, t oh, no, 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 that was a different car. That was a different car. The, <laughs> we, I never owned Titus, but oh, uh, the, that was just the car I drove around in California. But uh, yeah, Jay Baruchel drives my my Civic wagon, which which brought back some fond memories. Nice, nice. I think it was meant to show that he was a loser. So, yeah. But that's okay. All right.